how you know, it's often a struggle to um, make ends meet and get around and do these things, but I, I just persisted. And um, because it's, yeah, it's all I'm really interested in is to do magic and art. Right. So I just kept at it until um, eventually um, I'm having some success to make it uh, more easy and flowing to do so. Yes. Um, I want to talk about your residency at the Star and Snake because that is um, one of the main reasons you're here. Um, yeah, yeah, I wanted to talk about that too. Yeah, so please, um, for people who don't know, um, the Star and Snake is a wonderful, magical, and art center in New Hampshire created by Natan and Kay. And, um, well, I'll let you talk more about it. Yeah, well, I'm speaking from there right now. Um, it's just drawing towards the end of my two-week residency here. Um, twice a year, they have artist residencies that uh, haven't been going long. I think this is the third one. Um, where they just select a few artists. Um, anyone can apply. Um, I think that artists who have some kind of um, spiritual or magical aspect to what they're doing and um, they come together in this amazing uh, old church that's sort of being re-consecrated as a, a temple of art and magic. Um, yeah, um, that's been a really interesting experience. Um, yeah, it did, uh, it triggered the, I've been meaning to come back to the States for a while and um, I got the residency here. It's just like, okay, that's a good, um, good, that's a good reason to start. And then sort of, sort of arranged other performances and um, visits and things around that. Um, yeah, it's um, exceeded my expectations. I saw some photos on the stone snake site and everything. It looked like a pretty amazing place and seemed run by great people. But um, yeah, it's even as soon as I got here, I was just blown away. Like I'm actually seeing and feeling the space in three dimensions. It's quite incredible what's been done, and it's you know it's still um, in its foundations too. It feels like it's really you know, still growing. Um, um, and the resonance has been great because uh, yeah, just uh, being in this kind of container of um, just five people all all going right into this creative space for two weeks. So, you know, a lot of the times that people aren't talking to each other, they're just there, you know, painting in the same room or, uh, you know, everyone's just sort of obsessively doing their, their thing, but there's um, this sort of uh, you know, rapport of everyone, everyone got into that creative zone together and then, um, and, you know, there's uh, times, of course, when we do um, socialise and also uh, great... Uh, feedback sessions as well where everyone's sort of uh, um, giving each other feedback on what they're doing and talking about their processes and I think everyone's really learning a lot from that because people have got really different approaches so um, there's lots of um, sharing and learning new things and seeing different approaches and you know, so it's, a, it's really fantastic things. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's amazing that what they've created there. I look forward to seeing it grow. Mm. It's an interesting thing for me because uh, I haven't actually done an art residency before, but the um, the idea of it um, you know, being a, a magical, spiritual oriented one um, made me more interested. But also the fact that the actual space here is uh, designed as a as a temple of art and magic, and you know, that intention is um, very aligned with with my own life. Um, had visions for years of that kind of a that kind of a project. Um, I'd eventually like to start something like this myself. Um, yeah, just that sort of alignment between art and magic and how you can create a space, you know, like a physical space that is sacred, but it's also incredibly beautiful. You know, by filling it with magical art. And um, you know, one of the things I've been doing here is some sculpture that's actually. Uh, integrated into the actual structure um, because I, I really, really like the idea of 
and our temple architecture, you know, where things are sculptural, but they're, they're actually fitting into the, into the actual space and enhancing the space and helping to create a magical environment. So I looked around when I arrived for some of the road to do that, and there's this fantastic old fireplace in here. And I made out of stone for filming places where I can integrate these clay sculptures into them. And they just went off to be fired today, and then I'm going to be here. Um, Cementing them into place and blending them into the rocks. Nice. Yeah, that's a way to leave it, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Well, it feels like you know everyone that's, that's come through and does it, you know, doesn't have a residency sort of leaves leaves a mark here in some kind of way, and that way it, it keeps growing. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm. Do you want to talk a little bit about your upcoming presentation in New York? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that one's that's the only other one besides the Saira one, actually, that is uh, focused on the Talaquidrian because it's at Catland, which is a, a bookshop in Brooklyn. And um, yeah, because of that, it seemed um, like a good idea to talk about the books um, rather than just do a performance. Um, so it's going to be similar to what I did in Salem, but there's a like a uh, sound system and everything too. And um, so you know, I'll be able to get a bit more elaborate with the music. I use um, like loops and effects pedals usually. Um, the one in Salem is more just acoustic. But um, yeah, and I'll also be having the full sort of alchemical chess um, performance at the Catland. So I'll be doing a, a talk first about the Telequidrivian. I say talk, but it's sort of um, you know, based in in that, but it will have a uh, video and a little bit of music and everything, um, similar to what I did at Salem. But then after a break, I'll do, do some more performance stuff, and some more music, and um, chemical chess, full alchemical chess performance um, with the actual set. And... Um, the set will also be, the whole set will be on display so people can you know, have a look closely at the pieces before and afterwards that and um, some of my paintings and drawings will be on display all day at the bookshop so that um, people can look at them. And then in the evening I'll be at the talk and the performance. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a, a whole multimedia thing too. Nice. So remind us when, when that's going to be again. It's the 24th, uh, Friday the 24th of July, so... Um, At Catland in Brooklyn. Well, from, yeah, from when we're talking, it's only um, a week in a day away, but um, by the time this is actually on air, even less, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so very soon. So you're, if you're in or um, near New York, please uh, come and check it out. I've never actually performed in New York. I've only been there once before, and it was way back in 1999. So it's going to be an, an interesting new arena for me. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's really been a pleasure to speak with you, and it was a pleasure to, to meet you in person and to be uh, present for your performance and to hear about the Taylor Quadrivium and learn about alchemical chess a little bit. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that um, people who are able to get to Catland for that performance will, or, and to see some of your artwork will motivate and, uh, and do so as a result of hearing this. Great. Yeah. Or um, Portland and um, Seattle shows coming up there as well. Yeah, no doubt. It so, will be on my website, which I'm sure you'll provide a link for. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Oreo, obviously your work is highly recommended. Uh, if people are not already familiar, I, I can't imagine that they're not, but, you know, definitely check it out. It's well worth your time. In the Occult to Personality membership section, Oriel talks more about his amazing magical artwork and performances, as well as his recent artist residency at the Star and Snake. Also, 
Oriel performs a special chanted incantation that's not to be missed. Just go to occultofpersonality.net slash membership and join now if you haven't already. It's the best way to support the podcast while receiving access to a tremendous amount of additional exclusive content. And now Oreo will take us out with his alchemical chess. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Ah!